I've been testing the Canyon Spectral On electric trail bike over the past few months. I actually checked out the original old non-electric Canyon Spectral last year and it ended up being one of my favorite bikes all year. It rode really well, I loved the ride feel on it and so I was stoked to see how the electric version compares. Well, one of the main differences between the Spectral On and the regular Spectral or acoustic Spectral or whatever you want to call it, aside from the motor and battery, is the fact that this version is a mixed wheel bike. Uh, it has a 29er wheel up front and a 27.5 in the rear. A lot of people call these mullet bikes, but there's actually a bike brand by the name of mullet. So to avoid confusion, I'm gonna call this a mixed wheel bike. Now, if you're not sure what the advantages are of a mixed wheel mountain bike, uh, be sure to check out Single Tracks. We've got a number of articles about mixed wheel. It's definitely a trend that we're seeing more of, and there are advantages and perhaps some disadvantages. The Spectral On features a really big battery and a powerful motor uh, that's designed for longer rides, for bigger mountain rides. It's basically one of the biggest batteries that you're gonna find on an electric bike. So you get a lot of range, um, also the potential to do a lot of climbing and descending. It's still a class one e-bike, which means it's going to deliver assistance up to 20 miles per hour. That doesn't mean you can't go faster than 20 miles per hour. If you're bombing down a downhill, it's not gonna like apply the brakes for you or anything. Uh, but that does mean if you're like on flat ground and you're really pedaling hard and you're getting up to 20, it's not gonna keep helping you at that point. You're really gonna feel the motor power disappear and it's gonna be all you at that point. Now, because this bike has such a big battery and a powerful motor, while the batteries and motors are getting lighter and more efficient, they're still heavy. This bike with this particular build, uh, it's an extra large, weighs over 52 pounds. And I actually tested a higher end version of the Spectral on as well with XTR and full Kashima shocks and dropper post and everything. And that bike was still over 50 pounds. So this is not a lightweight e-bike by any means uh, because of the battery and the motor. So how does it ride? The Spectral On really rips downhill as you would expect. The suspension feels a bit more linear on this version of the Spectral than on the non-electric version. And I suspect that that's to provide more support for the added weight of the battery and the motor. So it really feels well supported when you're pedaling. There's not a lot of the like small bump sensitivity that you're gonna see on the traditional Spectral, but it does offer plenty of suspension for riding fast, for big hits, uh, pretty much anything that you're gonna encounter on a trail ride. The other thing about this bike is that it holds its line really well. It's super stable at speed, thanks to the geometry. It's got you know progressive reach numbers, uh, fairly slack head tube angle. Um, but more than that, Canyon has done a great job distributing the weight of the battery and the motor. And so the bike, it just feels, feels really stable and descends well. It's not a bike I would describe as playful, but at the same time, it's surprisingly easy to get the bike into the air thanks to the suspension. You're really gonna wanna dial in the suspension settings uh, for your riding style and your weight and all that sort of thing to really get the most out of it. But once you do, the bike responds really well and starts to feel a lot more like a traditional mountain bike that's gonna be lighter weight and easier to maneuver. Speaking of maneuverability, one of the things I don't like about the Spectral is the headset limits the amount of turning radius that the wheel has. And this is to prevent the handlebars from hitting the top tube in the event of a crash, um, and also for the stanchions on the fork uh, to avoid hitting the down tube. You see this on a lot of bikes, um, but if you're riding really technical trails that have sharp curves, um, and you're trying to do like more low speed maneuvers, it definitely, I found that it limits sort of the turning radius that I was able to get out of the bike. Now, as far as climbing goes, obviously this is an e-bike, so it's gonna provide assistance on the climbs. And where I found this really makes a difference is when you're riding with friends, friends on e-bikes in particular, um, because you're able to get through the climbs a lot quicker, you're able to chat, sort of along the way. It's not to say that it does all the work for you. This bike actually has a 34 tooth chainring, which is pretty stout. 
And so it's going to be really important to be in the right gear for any climb that you're going to be attacking. And I found this especially like on really steep stuff. I thought, oh, I've got an e-bike. I'll just put it in turbo and, you know, I'll be able to climb anything. And that's true to some degree, but uh, this bike, you know, it doesn't have a super steep seat tube angle. And so um, you're still going to need to consider sort of your posture and your balance in terms of climbing. Uh, the 34 tooth chain ring, that's, that's a pretty stout chain ring. You're going to need some strong legs with this bike if you're not you know, in the easiest gear all the time. And so um, in a lot of ways, it rides a lot like a normal Spectral. Um, gear choice is gonna be really important, um, cadence and speed and all that kind of thing for climbing. Uh, but once you are settled into like a climbing rhythm, the bike works really well. I found the battery to be very efficient, um, able to do multi-hour rides with plenty of battery left over beyond traditional mountain bike rides where you're gonna be riding up for some time and then bombing back down an extended section. I found that the Spectral really works well on flat trails as well, sort of the local trails that you might hit after work. It really, in a lot of ways, it feels like the bike turns flat trails into downhills. And I was able to work on my skills and handling a lot more with the bike. The included Minion tires are excellent for cornering. Well, after testing, there are just a couple of things I would change about this bike build if I were putting this together myself. One, the dropper post that's included uh, is short. It's 150 millimeters of travel on this extra large bike. There's clearly enough room for a larger dropper post. The other thing is the tire selection. So like I said, I love the Minions, uh, but the version of the tire that's specced on this bike is actually one of the thinner casing versions, which means it's not gonna be quite as burly and as puncture resistant. And I actually did flat, uh, pinch flat the rear tubeless tire, and that tire had to be thrown away. So a burlier tire would be great on this build. This is a 52 pound bike after all, and so lighter weight tires aren't gonna make a whole lot of difference. Overall, I really enjoyed testing the Canyon Spectral on. It descends really well, which is important with an e-bike, because if you're buying an e-bike, you're probably someone who wants to get the climbs over with anyway. And this bike does climb pretty well. Uh, it's not the best climber out there, even though it's an e-bike, but overall, it's a blast to ride and it's a really fun trail bike. Well, be sure to subscribe to the Single Tracks YouTube channel for more mountain bike reviews, including our mid-travel mountain bike mashup coming this fall, where we're gonna put a whole bunch of regular non-electric trail bikes head-to-head -to, -head to the test and bring that to you on YouTube and Single Tracks, where you can also find more mountain bike reviews and additional details about this bike and others.